Thank you for watching the video. It's your boy PBK Nice giving you that dog news the way I always do. Fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it, some ain't. Thank you for subscribing. If you subscribe, thank you for liking the video. Hit that like button. If you like the video, comment at the bottom. I'm rocking with you. It's your boy PBK Nice giving it to you. Let's go. Directly off of a uh, um, spike, directly off of this dog, but directly it wasn't the only these younger dogs that he got now. He was he, he ain't had no red boy dogs back then. It was all them Chinaman dogs and them the Frisco dogs and stuff like that. He ain't had not one red boy dog on his yard. Bobby Peru, we got dogs off Bobby Peru. We got dogs off Dynamite, Dynamite, whatever whatever they call them. That was later on down the line. You know what I'm saying? But the Frisco dogs we had them way back in the '99, 2000. You know what I'm saying? They started off all right. But when you start bringing that high caliber dog into, into the town, boy, boy, boy. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. It, it, it never fails. Like, I don't know about now. See, the 45 minutes I'm talking about was the real Frisco and the real Chinaman dogs. I don't know about what they got going on now, 2022. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the ones that was coming directly off them while the dogs were still living. Frisco was still living. You know what I'm saying? 45 minutes. I had one with teeth this long. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. He'll bite through a, I'm talking about he'll bite through bricks. You believe you let him out there on that hog and he, and, and, and them uh, big dogs get the hog cornered off and you let him go. He get up, he gonna hit that hog so hard. Boom. But I ain't gonna lie to you. If the bay dogs, if you try to take him out there by itself, he wouldn't last. He would not last. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. I got to stick with what I'm used to, man. Got to stick with what I'm used to. And far as I know, you know, back back in the days, my days, they were 45 minutes. I don't know. Y'all boys might be done spunked it up a little bit now, you know. And plus, you know, a lot of people do a lot of paper peddling, so they actually ain't got a Frisco dog. They really got a Red Boy Jocko. But saying this Frisco, and now this, this motherfucker damn... Give a Frisco a better name. You know, a lot of people do different things like that. Not intentionally. Some of them will be intentionally. Some of them be, you know, they don't be knowing. But it does and it is happening. And I'm talking about the Frisco dogs from back in the days. I ain't talking about these up-to-date ones. So y'all boys don't get mad. You know what I'm saying? When I'm talking about the Frisco dogs. I ain't talking about yours. I'm talking about the ones that I seen Frisco had. Oh, oh man. Oh man, another one I used to, another one I used to rag down out in the woods when it come to hog hunting. Wild side, wild side ain't had nothing. You know what I'm saying? Anything, anything. At least when it came to me, you know what I'm saying. I ain't never got out hunted by no wild side. You know what I'm saying? So if I was looking for a high competitive right now, I, that wouldn't be lying. I'd be looking for it myself. You know, I can't not what the next man looking for. What the next man came across might be came across one better than me. You know, I ain't never owned one. But I ran through them. Take them out there in the woods. They can't find them hoes. 
and Red Boy, I don't, I don't know about these, like, uh, the Boomer Dogs and all that. That's from the more modern area. I'm talking about, like, Bailey's Bingo. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, some of them are uh, Hollins Dogs and stuff like that. Them the Red Boy Dogs I know about. If you ask me, that old school Jeep, the old school Jeep with that old school Red Boy, you know, was some pretty phenomenal dogs. The old school Jeep, not, not off tail, not off no weird jack, none of that type of stuff. Um, other Jeep dogs, like the Dines dog, Dines Turtle. And you remember I told y'all I had a dog coming down off Jimmy Boots? No, no. The dog coming down off Jimmy Boots, you know, Jimmy Boots, old blood. Old dog, so. I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm gonna tell you the honest truth. That dog was like, like a, um, it, was, it wasn't, that dog wouldn't compete with them, with them average caliber uh, dog in the woods. I ain't gonna lie to you, that dog was a low caliber dog. He was down off Jimmy Boots in the pedigree, I can see him right there in the, uh, it wasn't even in the third, it had to be no more than the grandson. I don't remember exactly how close it was right now, because he wasn't a dog that I was supposed to remember. You know, I only remember the good ones. He wasn't one of the ones I was supposed to remember. But I remember he, he was down off Jimmy Boots. But anyway, real quick, on another subject, you know, the guy asked me about breeding. Breeding. When it comes to breeding, I'm cool with the brother and sister, but I'm not a fan of that. Same little. I'm not a fan of the brother and sister, same little, unless it's a die need situation, like two great dogs or something like that, maybe. But for the most part, a father to daughter, a mother to son, something like that, father to niece, stuff like that. Keep it in line, but not too, too, their brother and sister. I'm not a fan of the brother and sister. Not saying they haven't produced top, top, top notch dogs, because they probably have throughout our history, you know. But the brother and sister litter, mate, is not one of the more popular breeds, I should say, when it comes to line breeding and inbreeding. But the main thing you gotta do with your dogs, man, is just keep the ones you got, or whatever you get, whatever you think you got that's good, keep them, breed them over a period of time and see what you come with. Y'all don't give it time. You only, you only, you don't give it time. I'm looking at, I've been looking at things over the last year or so, different people, you know, on the internet, dropping your puppies, this and that. Give it time, man. Have a, a daughter, have a granddaughter, have a great granddaughter, great grandsons off these dogs. Then you can know what the dogs, that line is producing. You're not gonna know what you're getting by no one little. You're not gonna know. You're gonna, you're gonna mess yourself up out a good dog because the girl dog could not be good. You could be studying your dog off and the girl dog genes might take over and throw you off some bull job puppies and you think your dog ain't producing. You know what I'm saying? Take that and then if you got bull job puppies, you might get stronger with next time because you breed the daughter back to the daddy and it's gonna make it stronger than the mama was. And then you take that and bring that back again to either the daddy or the uh, brother or something. You know, you get you, you got to keep going back to the stronger genes. And when it comes to breeding, this is my opinion. You know, I always give my opinion. When it comes to breeding, the pit bull gang need to take a note from the people in the working dog gang. You know, people that do working lines. They don't care about pedigrees. You know what I'm saying? They don't care about pedigrees to an extent. It's about the dog himself, what that dog himself can do. You know what I'm saying? You have a better chance of breeding two good dogs together and getting a great litter than breeding two pedigrees together and getting a great litter. Two pedigrees ain't going to give you a great litter, but two great dogs will give you a great litter. So if you know a dog from a pedigree line that's you know, a lower quality, and but that dog is a superior dog, and you go take your female and breed to a better pedigree dog, which is a lower caliber dog, you know, then you're going to pretty much get what you ask for. But I know these days it's about making money, making the pair look right, and different little things like that, so I can't knock what nobody do. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you will get better dogs by matching two great dogs of any breed together than trying to match two pedigrees together. Because, like I said before, Pedigrees is all good, but pedigrees don't work them shows. Pedigrees don't go around in them circles. Pedigrees don't stand and, and, and with perfect confirmation. 
You know what I'm saying? Pedigrees don't do none of that. It's the dog himself. Pedigrees don't tackle decoys. Pedigrees don't do them agility courses. The dogs themselves do these things. You know, so kind of focus on the dogs and less on the pedigrees. Shout out to all my people, out there, all the bulldoggers. Shout out to my boy D Slim, the OG, uh, GB. Shout out to all the bullet gang. Shout out to the whole pit bull gang, the working dog gang, Belgian model wise, Doug Shepherd. Anybody who trying to do something with their dog, or like I always say, that love their dog, like family. Shout out to you. Shout out to all my subscribers. Everybody who be commenting, rocking with me, like always, you know. And one thing about dogs, man, every place has different levels of competition. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what you're competing in. It don't matter what you're competing in. It could be this kind of show, that kind of show, this kind of show, that kind of show. Whatever level, you know, it's different levels of competition, you know, for every place that you go at. Some people ain't going to never see the level of competition that you, you know, that you see. And like I always tell you when it comes to uh, bulldog breeding, pit bull breeding, the whole hunting and stuff like that, or different kind of sports, the man with one dog. You see, a lot of people think, you know, the big kennels, the big kennels, the 30, 40, 50, 60 dogs, 70 dogs. Okay, that all that's cool and dandy. You know what I'm saying? But that, that 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 one kennel who got one dog, believe me, I done seen it. I done seen it. You know what I'm saying? And it depends on the dog himself, too. It depends on the dog himself. It got to be a high quality, you know, dog in whatever sport you're competing in. It got to be a high quality dog. But... That one, that one, you know what I'm saying, that one dog kennel can show Trump way over, you know, them big kennels. You know, big kennels is just, a lot of times people get intimidated by them big kennels. You know what I'm saying? Especially, you know, the one dogs, the two dog kennel, man. You know what I'm saying? Mike got the most, you know, the, the greatest dog in the world. But he intimidated because a, a kennel that's more well known than him you know, Mike got a hundred dogs, more well known to him. Some of them great dogs, but that intimidates a lot of folks. You know what I'm saying? It intimidates them. When it comes to scatterbred dogs, when it comes to scatterbred dogs, this is the deal. Genetically, they probably be the best. Genetically, they probably had the best genes out of some dogs because, you know, the gene pool is so spread out, you know. But performance. You may get a great one, you may have an ace, but you never know which side coming out on which particular day. You know they say every dog has his day. You never know which side is coming out on which particular day. And then on that particular day, you want to blame it on, okay, say you got out of you know, the first two dogs, you got Jeep on top, and then you got Eli on the bottom. You might be more of an Eli fan. So if the dog start having a bad day or had a bad day, then you're going to say, oh, that's the Jeep side up there, this and that, this and that. You know, you're going to blame it on the Jeep or uh, whatever, you know, half and half of that, you know, so that side is. So that's the only thing about scatterbread. You never know what you're going to get when it when it comes out that way, even if that dog is an ace. You know what I'm saying? When you start breeding them puppies, you're going to have a line breed off that particular scatterbread dog, you know, to start tightening that thing up. You can't keep... Crossing scattered after scattered after scattered, thinking you're going to get, you know, the best dogs. You start with your scattered, and then you start line breeding your scattered to make it to that point where it's pure, basically. You know what I'm saying? You started from a scattered, but that scattered, that, that, that dog that you got was the beginning of your pure line. You know what I'm saying? That line that you was going to make pure. But like I said before, you got to breed, breed, breed. It takes time, year after year after year. Generation after generation after generation. And for anybody that know Champion Fatty, you know, came down off Crossroads Champion, Champion Toe Jam, you know, and Toe Jam was straight off yellow, okay? This is just my opinion now, you know, going back to back in the, talking back in the days, you know. Champion Fatty was a great dog. He lost to Barracuda, okay? My opinion. All right, Fatty was Sambo's father. Just my opinion. Now, Fatty was a tad bit bigger than Sambo, and Barracuda was a tad bit bigger than Fatty. But my opinion... Sambo was a better dog than Fatty at the end of the day. If Fatty would have been Sambo weight, Sambo would have ran through his ass. Sambo would have ran through his ass out there in them woods, them hogs, you know what I'm saying, 
go down, they go down permanently dealing with Sambo. You know what I'm saying? Fatty wasn't, didn't have a reputation of ending the hogs. Sambo was ending the hogs. Sambo had more Red Boy Jeep in him than Fatty had. Fatty was a great dog, you know, and he went against the competition of his day. You know what I'm saying? But his youngest son, Sambo, like I always say, not, not, not knocking Fatty again, but if he would have came down to 55, 54, 53, around that area, then I believe, you know, in the right person's hands, well, actually me, you know, I believe that Sambo would have out-hunted Fatty any day. Any day. You know what I'm saying? Because Sambo was a finisher, a real finisher. You know what I'm saying? And Fatty wasn't. Not no finisher like that. Some people might say they seen him finish one or two, but the people that seen Sambo are going to say they would have seen him finish everything. You know what I'm saying? Everything. And if Sambo would have bred to the dogs that Fatty bred to, he would have made way better puppies than what Fatty made. You know what I'm saying? Because I bred Sambo with all different strains and everything I bred him with came out phenomenal. Everything. All the scattered bread stuff. Only thing that came back real when I brought them back to the yellow stuff, it threw a lot of laydown dogs. You know, it threw a lot of laydown dogs, and I, I really didn't like, you know, pretty much that style because Sam Bowles a laydown dog, but he had that drive in him as well. He had that get up and go in him as well when it was time to do it. Sam Bowles was way smarter than Fatty. Sam Bowles was a way more durable dog. He he could take more, you know what I'm saying, than Fatty. I, I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. It's just. Fatty was special. Now, Fatty was special. Fatty was a special dog. Fatty was a special dog because I had dogs off Fatty Litter as well. You know, we had two dogs off that litter. That was a special, special litter. And not taking nothing from Fatty. Fatty was a great dog. But he produced, and that's what dogs are supposed to do. They're supposed to produce better than them. You know what I'm saying? If your dog is not producing better than him, then that's what you need to try to achieve. A dog that's producing better than him, and that's what he did. He produced Sambo. Sambo was better than Fatty. It's just, you know, different people had him. And the person who had Fatty, his connections was better than my connections. I wasn't connected to the person who had Fatty, who they was connected to. You know, so Fatty seen a different level than what I seen. Another thing. One thing I can't say about them Toe Jam and Fatty dogs, you know, they were the true Hound dog looking dogs, you know what I'm saying? Back in my days, you know, when I, big long floppy ears, not no little floppy ears, big long floppy ears. So if a person, you just walking up to a person, your dog about five months old, they're gonna be like, what, what kind of dog is that? Labrador or something like that? I'm telling you, but these are pure yellow dogs. Like I say, man, the pit bull game is all about money now. It's a whole lot different. It ain't about a dog as much as it was, you know, from price gouging when it comes to hunting. Or going in any kind of competition, price gouging, saying you can't compete if it ain't this, you know, this much, to selling the puppies to three or four thousand. You know what I'm saying? And, and not caring who you're selling the puppies to, long as they got the money. That's the main thing. Not caring who your puppies go to, long as they got that couple thousand, you can get one boom. You can get one boom. They, 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 you know, they take care of the dog, but they ain't working the dog. You know, some of them dogs are meant to be worked so they can get acknowledgement. You know, you got a worker dog, especially if it's a working dog. You know, I can sell you a Malawai all day long. But if you just going to have it sitting on the couch looking at TV all day long, that ain't what he want to be doing. You know what I'm saying? He want to be working. So if I sell you a dog because you had the money, but you keep him on the couch all day, okay, yeah, you took care of him, but you ain't making a name for me as far as what kind of dogs I'm producing. You know what I'm saying? Am I producing good dogs? I, uh, the people don't know because the person who I sold my dog to just got him on the couch looking at TV. No abuse, but he's not using the dog for what the dog is meant to be used for. And that's what breeders are lacking these days. Money, money, money. Money, money, money. So you get lack of dog, lack of dog, lack of dog. That's the difference. Although it was about money back then, people care more about the dogs. So we got better dogs. We got better Better dogs. Now, people care more about the money. So you get less quality dogs. That's all it is to it. 
Your dogs ain't what it was back in my days because it was less about money, more about the dogs. You cared more about bragging rights than you cared about getting that $1,000, uh, $15,000, $5,000. You know what I'm saying? That's good. But see, yeah, you get that $5,000, but you might lose it as well. You know what I'm saying? But them bragging rights go 20 and 30 years. We be 40 years old talking about, man, you remember back in the days, this and that. My dog, I hunted your dog. Do, do. Bragging rights last a long time. You know what I'm saying? And they worth a whole lot more than some of that, you know, you're getting a better bulldog when you stop worrying about all that money. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for watching the video. Hit that like button. Hit that like button before you leave up out of here. Comment at the bottom. It's your boy, PBK9. It's giving you that dog news the way I always do. Fair and unbiased. Shout out to all the doggers out there from the top to the bottom, from the left to the right, from the east to the west. Shout out to all the doggers. You know what I'm saying? If you love your dog, you're rolling with the bait. I'm out.